It is the most hotly anticipated race in Hong Kong in many, many decades. It is a clash of three superstars coming up on Sunday at Sha Tin. Alongside it, it is the Classic Mile. Welcome to a Racing to Win. Joined to preview it all by Paul Lally and Tom Wood. We could only afford two superstars in the studio, so you two are it. <laughs> Tom, what a race. I don't know about superstars, uh, Mark, but uh, what a race is going to be all right. It's been dubbed the Battle of the Big Three, uh, Romantic Warrior, Golden 60, the reigning horse of the year, and, of course, California Spangle, who uh, defeated Golden 60 last time out in the International uh, Mile, and so there's a whole lot to look forward to on the undercard as well as the, the classic uh, mile later on, which is very, very even. We've got it all covered here, and... You haven't been here for a couple of weeks and no one can still win the full triple trio. This is the thing. I mean, um, and my bags disappeared as well. The jackpot's <laughs> on it. But there is a good one. 11.1 million uh, going into the triple trio. That's up to 19 million. And uh, also we've got uh, 1.2 million going into the uh, first double trio, races one and two. So that should get up to 5 million. There's a, the usual first starters in there as well. And that WrestleMania with those three, when they all the two, three good horses all meet together. Looking forward to that, of course. You're well, energised stop... after uh, Mount Everest. Exactly. We well, had to stop you wearing your wrestling underpants in today, too. <laughs> the viewers don't need to see that. Straight into it because it's a very busy show. The meeting details for it. It is a 10 race program and we've got uh, seven on the turf, eight plus three and three races on the all weather. Meeting number 40 of the season. The first race gets underway at one o'clock. The two races we focus on, races seven and nine. The features, the group one and the four year old, the Hong Kong Classic Mile. Stewards Cup, 4.05 start time, field of seven, golden 60 was the 2021 winner, Remedic Warrior. He won the Classic Mile, his only look at the trip. In California Spengel, he won the Hong Kong Mile at his last start. Waikuku was last year's winner. Then we've got the Upsetters, which will be Russian Emperor Beauty Joy and Pan Field. Speed map time here, Tom. Small field, which is going to give California Spengel the advantage. What happens around him, though? Yeah, well, it's going to be a race at the end. I think it's going to be decided by some small, crucial factors. Uh, what happens in the, the early part of the race is because we know Paul California Spengel can go forward, but what are they going to do with Waikuku? Because we know he can certainly roll forward and uh, race handy. Uh, California Spengel's stable mate, Beauty Joy, raced around to take him on last uh, time out at the 800 uh, metres. And, Golden 60, Romantic Warrior, Romantic Warrior drawn four, Golden 60, Barrier two. Yeah, exactly. So I think Golden 60, look, the thing with Beauty Joy is uh, I'm sure Tony Cruz will want to be positive with him from Barrier number one. So he can get him behind California Spangle. I, I, I put good to slow, but look, I think for the first 1,000 metres, it's going to be under that. And then California Spangle will probably try and take off at about the 600 and make it into a real staying test for the last 600 metres. Uh, Penfield and Russian Emperor, I think we know he's going to get back. It's just how those other four just in behind is going to be. Of course, 12 months ago, Tom uh, Waikuku caused a massive upset when he beat Golden 60. If he does it again this year, it will be an even bigger upset. It certainly would be because no eight-year-old has ever won this race, the uh, Stewards uh, Cup. Uh, Waikuku winning it in 2020, of course, uh, Downing Beauty Generation there, who was a winner in the year prior to that in Seasons Bloom going back five years ago. Well, outside the four-legged variety, it's the two-legged men that are going to make play here. We're going to hear from the big players right now. Zach Purton, followed by Vincent Ho and Karis Teaton, the riders of the big three. Any time I get to jump on his back, it's always enjoyable and obviously there's been a lot of talk around it. Um, you know, it's a showdown, so let's just hope that each of the horses get their chance and they, they should in this small field as well. Um, and let's hope that it goes down to the last 50 metres because, you know, we, we want it to be exciting and, you know, all three of them are in good form. Um, so, yeah, we look forward to it. Before we touch more on the, the aspect of the race, etc., his recent trial, he, he looked very good in that. Were you happy? Did that go to plan and fully what you expected from him? Yeah, he just does the same thing every time he trials now. He, he stands in the gates quite good, he begins well, he just goes along at his own speed um, and does what he has to do. So, you know, as long as his action feels good and he pulls up well, that's uh, all we need to see, and, and that was the case. Uh, I can sense a, a wry grin, Zach, when you talk about this horse. He clearly means a bit to you. Um, how much do you get a kick out of the whole preparation and the lead-up to, to something like this? Because, I mean, you are a, a big-time, you know, athlete, if you will, and, you know, this is, this is your stage, and, and it's a big stage. Well, this is what we do it for, right? We want to ride these good horses in these big races, and especially when we, we're faced with some challenges, and we, well, I have two strong challenges to, to come at me. Um, you know, I don't know who's going to come out on top. Yeah. You know, a, a small little thing that happens at some stage of the race might be the defining moment for the result. So um, we all have to be on our game. Um, more importantly, all the horses look like they're in good form and they're fit. 
Um, they're still early on in their preparation, so none of them are going to be over the top, um, and we just hope it's going to be a good race. Vincent Golden 60 uh, returns to action this Sunday. Obviously a huge race, a huge day, the Stewards Cup, a, a race that you and he have, have got history in, of course. Uh, firstly, how is the horse in preparation for this big race? Yeah, um, it felt really good yesterday morning on the turf. Uh, you know, very light on his feet again, and, you know, he very smooth, did everything well, uh, pulled up very well. Uh, so... Yeah, I think he's ready again for, for the group ones. In contrast to his all-weather trial and his turf gallop, were you, were you happy with the gallop and the trial, or, or were you happy with the trial as well? I'm happy with the trial as well. Uh, you know, everything went smooth, so I uh, had to work him a little, of course, uh, that day. And the turf, I'm even, you know, happier uh, that how, how he felt. So. A lot's been made, Vincent, of course, of you know the battle of the big three, if you will, the tempo of this race. We, we look, we know as if we've got a, a, the confirmed leader in the shape of, of California Spangle. Where do you see you and your horse settling? Do, do you ride him much like a, a champion's mile and a bit closer, or is that just a given, mm. given the size of the field, perhaps? Yeah, wherever he is comfortable. Uh, you know, he's, he's now very relaxed. We also jump well and he also has the speed if I need to be, uh, if I want him to be, and uh, you know, very likely uh, be behind the pace uh, between three to five would be ideal. Uh, you know, not too far back, obviously. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, where it's comfortable is the most important thing. It's going to be a uh, massive uh, weekend. Uh, three, three very good horses uh, crushing each, each another. And uh, yeah, like you say, I'm just uh, so uh, grateful to be able to ride this horse again. And uh, just looking forward to the race now. Uh, how has he felt, Karis, in the morning and in his trial? Have you, have you felt him improve or is he just the same quality horse that you've always known him to be? He, you know, he's a, he's, he's a horse that after every trial or every workout, he gets, uh, I mean, physically he improves and you can feel that. Um, so he, after each and every work I've been doing on him, I've been working every morning. So yeah, I've been feeling, feeling how, how he's improving towards, uh, towards his race, especially after a trial. Uh, after, after his trial, you can feel it wakes him up and gets his mind uh, all ready. And just finally, Karis, in a perfect scenario, how does this race pan out for you and Romantic Warrior in your mind going into this, this race? We, well, we, we, we're drawn next to, to, to California Spangle and he's usually uh, pretty handy. So, you know, we, we'll let him come out and, uh, you know, we'll either, either follow him or maybe be one back or two back. Uh, you know, we, like I said, I just want to go out there and ride, ride the race uh, to suit the horse. And... Uh, uh, you know, this horse, he, he's going to put himself in a position where he wants to be and he's going to take it on from there. Straight from the big three there, as far as the riders go, Paul, to the Longines Hong Kong Cup. Romantic Warrior absolutely scintillating in this. Wasn't he? Uh, didn't he Didn't he really put his hand up and say he's one of the best horses in Hong Kong? We all sort of knew that already, but this was just fantastic uh, win from him. Now, he's one from one over the 1,600 metres as well. Romantic Warrior, this is 2,000. Maybe he's a better horse over a mile. Um, well, it's hard to say looking at this, though, but um, any distance, he seems to win. Looks like he could be a good horse over any distance. So we saw that trial there. The trial down the straight was very good, over 1,000 metres, and this that was a standout performance there. The form out of that race has been franked as well with Money Catcher coming out and winning the, the January Cup, but that win was exceptional. The, the trial was very good coming into this. Yeah, it sure was, and uh, Karis Teton back on board. Now, the graphic here, Tom, is the breakdown of last time between California Spangle and Golden 60. Yeah, so the, the third section was pretty much identical, apart from the, the little micro splits there, but 22.62 for that third section for the pair of them. And then, of course, Golden 60, that last sort of 100 metres or so when he really knuckled down and got close to a California Spangle. He's run home in 22.98, California Spangle 22.23, Paul. And he wouldn't have wanted it much further, California Spangle, that day. No, he wouldn't, would he? That's why I think he might take off at the 600 and just try and try and keep going because Cali um, Golden 60 seems like he could get him over the 400. Of the others, 
Paul Panfield. Now, he's a Group 2 winner over the 1,600 metres. If anyone from four down to seven won this race, it'd be a huge shock. His trial was very good, though. No, it was. He, he trialled really well uh, leading this. He has trialled well in the past. And, look, he's been, sort of been there or thereabouts in his races. You know, he's run sort of fifths and sixths in his last few. Uh, sometimes the race hasn't gone his way. So we'll see what happens here with him. He'll get back. He'll want as much pace on as possible. Chase home, uh, Lucky Swain S in this uh, trial. will be one of the, the favourites going forward to the Group 1 sprint uh, in uh, a few days' uh, time. And he'd won a trial before this uh, trial as well. Only thing that concerns, concerns me is he's got a few internal issues. And he comes back from 2,400 metres for this as well. Who wins it, Paul? Don't go Romantic Warrior. I think he can win over the mile. So he's on top. He can sit just outside the leader. Uh, Golden 60, California Spangle. And then I'm going to put Beauty Joy in because I think he can run on for fourth. But I'm around the top three. Two, one, three, six. Yeah, around the top three as well, but uh, I'll go out uh, with uh, Romantic Warrior as uh, well. Two to beat, uh, one goal in 63, California Spangle. And of course, uh, a winner of this race, uh, Waikuku. Uh, he goes in for uh, fourth. Two, one, three and four. And before we head to the break, a quick reminder about Hong Kong Direct this week with extended coverage of the Stewards Cup and also a touch on the Classic Mile. You'll find it on the website at hkjc.com. Click on audio and video. Welcome back to racing to win the first leg of the four-year-old series gets underway too on Sunday. It is the classic mile, over 1,600 metres of course, and they line up this way. Cordy Sep 6 goes to the distance for the first time. We have got Keefe carrying nine pounds less, packing tread milk goes up to the uh, 1,600 metres for the second time. Now we've got Beautyverse, he's coming off two trials. Flagship Warrior, super on debut, is uh, that win at uh, Sha Tin. Sword Point bolted up last time, Tuchel Massive when he was first up. Voyage Bubble carries five pounds less, and we go down through 12 through 14. So that is uh, the starters list for race number nine. Speed map here, Tom, good the tempo. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, because Voyage Bubble did get some pressure last at time out. They ran home in 24.38 with that victory, so that sort of told you that there was a bit of early speed last at time out. But there is sort of, I think, maybe questionable pace in this race, uh, Paul. Keefe, uh, Sweet Encounter, Sword Point and Beauty Verse uh, back on the inside uh, there, but you know, I think the pace might be a little questionable. Yeah, we'll see what happens if Voyage Bubble does get, alone, um, get left alone. I'm sure Jamie Carr will try and save him up for a last run. Keefe, uh, look, he led all the way in some of his Australian races. Uh, there was one over 1600 metres in uh, Queensland that he actually led all the way as well so there's a possibility there and Sweet Encounter we've seen him lead as well so there is possibility of those two. We'll hear from John Size shortly here are the past winners Paul uh, put old excellent proposals are the only one of the last three that hasn't gone on from, from this race No just a recent retiree isn't he excellent proposal, Romantic Warrior fantastic uh, horse that we know we'll be looking forward to seeing him up against Golden 60 Here's uh, sort of some ratings uh, of the past winners as well. There's a bit of a spread there from up to 114 for the likes of uh, Rapid Dragon, all the way down to, of course, uh, last year, Romantic War of 85. But the last 10 editions, sort of the average rating has been triple figured with the uh, 101. So uh, that uh, bodes well, I think, uh, for a horse like uh, uh, Keefe, uh, for, for, for sure, who does have that uh, rating of 100. He's number two in the book, but number three in the book is Packing Treadmill, and he's going to be written by Zach Purton. Zach Purton, packing treadmill is your ride in this year's Classic Mile, a race that uh, arguably, or not arguably, but um, uniquely has, has eluded you down through the years. Um, what brought you to the decision to, to ride this horse over any other? So historically, um, I've always tried to pick the horse early that I think can be best place to win the derby. Uh, and to do that, sometimes you've got to sacrifice being competitive in the Classic Mile because it's going to be a little bit sharp, a little bit short for that horse. Um, and that's just the price that I've had to pay. So this year I thought I might approach it a little bit differently and just try and find the horse I thought was probably better suited um, for this race and then worry about the other two legs of it afterwards. So um, that over a period of time, uh, I've been on and off a number of horses uh, that have raced over different distances. And I don't know, I'd, I've sort of just come to the point where I thought this horse was, was the best one I thought for this race. So uh, here we are, rightly or wrongly, we're going to find out. Um, I've drawn a bit awkward, so it's not going to be ideal. I've got a, a few runners inside me that also have speed. So if they make me to work, obviously my horse will be vulnerable and if I can't get in, he's not going to run the trip anyway. So we need some luck, um, but the horse is in good order. 
he continues to work well. He, he's a gentleman to do anything with. He's probably the most placid horse here in Hong Kong. He, he just does exactly what you want him to do all the time. He relaxes beautifully. He's got a good turn of foot. He's got a good will to win. Um, but this is a, it's, it's a strong test for him. Um, and he's, he's going to need things to go his way to, to be a chance. Nick Child with Zach Pert there on Packing Treadmill. We move on, Paul, to Flagship Warrior, who is last turning for home. And if you threw your ticket in the bin, probably fair enough, but what an effort from there. Yeah, look, he came through the inside and, and he just carried on, didn't he? He won really nice, great ride here from Karras. Didn't really go around too many horses. Uh, look, he won nicely, but this is the only time we've seen him. He's second up coming into the Classic Mole, which is a concern. He's drawn wide, but I think he'll get back. And it was a big effort because, yes, it was wide to this day as well, but he followed the inside and he was carrying uh, 133 pounds to run down. Brilliant way. We've seen Drombeg Banner come out and to perform well. So it was a very good performance from him. Let's go back to the trials now, Tom. As we open the gate, we'll just highlight where he is jumping out in those orange colours. So he's out very quickly and uh, showed early toe in this trial, but then restrained. Yeah, and there wasn't a lot of early pace in this trial whatsoever. The, the thing that sort of worried me here was he, he didn't settle at all sort of for the first 400 metres of this uh, barrier trial. You can just see him on the outside to there around Super Bella, just starting to get his head up and fire up here for Karis Teton, and he had trouble restraining him uh, there. And David Hayes sent him back to the trials twice, so he's had sort of two trials in 10 days. Yeah, so, yeah, look, he's going to be fit coming into it, but... It yeah, I just wonder second up. It worries me. I haven't included him. Okay, so that is flagship worry. He did one over the 15.25 at Morfittville prior to arriving. This horse, Paul, is coming back in trip sword point. Harder this week, but this was a very dominant victory. Yeah, didn't he win nicely? It was a good a good run from him. He's drawn nicely in barrier number four, so I don't think he's going to be too far off the pace as well. Look, I, he's, he's come into this race like in winning form. I, I haven't included him, but I did consider him. Yeah, and this, of course, was over 1,800 metres, so there would be no tr trouble, you'd think, with the, the trip here of uh, a mile. And he, he tracked the speed into the race and uh, really went away for a, a dominant win. He sure did. So that is sword point. We're going now to John Sice. He's got two very good chances in the race in Sweet Encounter and Tuchel. John, this year's Classic Mile has produced a, a really decent looking field. Um, you've got a couple of runners in the race. Um, if we could start with, with Sweet Encounter, you've got Ryan Moore um, coming over to ride him. Um, that obviously one plus, but he comes into the race in good form as well. Seems like he's in good form. He's quite consistent and solid. He's been beaten twice in his six starts, um, both times with uh, uh, some excuse. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a beautiful animal. He's got a very good temperament. Uh, he's well well built, and um, he seems at this point to be trouble free. So um, uh, his trial the other morning, he showed that um, he had a bit of a spring in his step and he was quite uh, happy to be there. He had a month between runs uh, last time and uh, that might, be, might have been sort of telling in the finish. Uh, the winner carried like 25 pounds less than him. So um, I thought the run was sound coming back uh, 200 metres. Just on to call, Luke Curry is going to take the ride, a, a cracking ride for, for Luke to pick up. Um, that performance last time, John, was a, a, a real standout. I mean, to get him back from, from a few little niggling injuries to, to do what he did, that must have pleased you no, no end. It was very pleasing. I mean, you could see in the parade ring, it was quite obvious that he wanted to be there and he was going to run well, you know. Um, he just was um, sort of bounding with good health and enthusiasm. <clears throat> he he travelled three wide facing the breeze, but he got comfortable uh, in that class. He was he was uh, comfortable with it and he was able to, to finish off quickly. There was horses coming at him in the finish, but he had a margin enough to win the race. I mean, it was probably an expectable performance from him. Um, he was well found in the market and uh, he's done the job. Two weeks after that is a little bit soon mm. to come back and, and have an outstanding run and then back him up in 14 days. A little bit soon, but uh, options for him going forward uh, weren't particularly attractive. So um, I thought he might as well run against uh, these horses in his same age and hope that um, his quality will, will help him run well.
How did you split the two size runners, Tom? Yeah, I quite like Tuchel in this race. Uh, Mark, he's drawn uh, low. Luke Curry was very impressive, I thought, uh, last time out first up covering ground, and hopefully he's come well through that. There you go. So uh, that's a preview of the Classic Mile. Open market, Paul. Quality lineup. Who's the best of them? Going to go with Keefe. He just meets packing treadmill so much better at the weights. But I think that's a Quinella. Those two horses going forward, the well-rated horses, Keefe and packing treadmill. Voyage Bubble, if they leave him alone, he's a hard horse to get past. And uh, Sweet Encounter's been so consistent. 2, 3, 11 and 5. Yeah, I'm with uh, Kifi as uh, well, uh, number two. Uh, comes in better to the weights, uh, certainly in a big way this time round compared to a uh, packing treadmill. Tuchel goes in, and I throw in Viva Chaleur. He's been improving with each and every start. Two, three, ten, and nine. Two excellent races we've previewed here on Racing to Win, Paul, but there are another eight on the program. Give us some winners. Yeah, I, I quite like Nice Birdie earlier in the card. Uh, uh, Zach Burton aboard race number two. He looks like he's ready to win. Further forward looks a really good debutant. Find My Love was impressive winning a trial. I think he can win at a, uh, at a price. And in a construction, I uh, just really like his run on debut, and he was over 100 to 1 when running second. And you can find race-by-race race analysis on the website, hkjc.com. Click on audio and video. It's that time of the show, Paul. You're back. We're fishing for a best bet. I'm uh, going with Nice Birdie. I just think this horse is uh, really uh, ready to win. He's had two starts. The two, two runs have both been very good. So Zach Purton aboard. And Find My Love, race five, number four. Alexia Vidal aboard. Coming to the all-weather for the first time. Was placed twice on it overseas. And the play in the last, amazing victory on point. And the first start, a beauty missile here in Hong Kong. And one of the main races for me, it's Kifi in the Classic Mile Race 9, number 2. He's very good when winning the Chevalier Cup, so he's the best, I think. Value with the karma for Casper Founds and Luke Curry. Race 8, Horse 8 on debut, drawn barrier 1. And the play around to him with Gluck Racer and Wide Blue Yonder, who hopefully gets some better luck this time round. The best bet is Indigenous Realm, race 8, number 10, Matthew Poon on board for Manfred Mann, a winner of just one from 15, but unlucky last time, covered plenty of ground. Great for you, finished a bit closer last time, he was only beaten five lengths, but he's two trials since, he's led up and been good in both of them, and the play race 6 will throw him in alongside Cheval Valiant and Juno Flash in a QQP 3, 5 and 12. We're back at Happy Valley on Wednesday night, but we can talk more about that next week, Tom, because what a day it is tomorrow. It's going to be a great day, we had a huge crowd at Shaw. Turn on Tuesday for Chinese New Year. Hopefully, Paul, we get uh, the same sort of crowd rocking up per Sunday. Yeah, fingers crossed. Well, the, the horses deserve it, don't they? Because we've got three of the best horses in Hong Kong racing. And we'll see you for the first of the ten races at one o'clock Hong Kong time.